In this video, we're going to create this cute cactus design in Affinity Designer. Let's get started. For this design, I'm going to use these colors, which I've left a link to in the video description. Okay, to start off this video, let's make the main shape of our cactus. I'll select the ellipse tool, and then I'll just click and drag out an oval like this. Then coming over to the colors, I'm going to sample this first green color here, and I'm going to apply that to the fill. And then I'm going to select the stroke, and I'm just going to remove it. So we should have this nice green color here. And now I'm just going to click and drag this so that it's centered in our document. So make sure you have snapping turned on so you can do that. Next, I want to give this shape some detail, and we'll use the pen tool to do that. So I'll just come over here and click on that. And then I'm going to lay down my first point on top here. And then I'm going to center my last point right down here. Then to customize this line, I'll just go over here to the color panel. And I'm going to select the stroke. And I'm going to sample this lighter green color. And I'll apply that. Then so that we can see our stroke better, I'm just going to go into the stroke panel. And I'll increase the width. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to adjust how this line looks. I'm going to grab the node tool to do this. And then starting from the center point, I'm just going to drag this outward slightly like that. All right, then I'm going to duplicate this line. So I'll grab the move tool and then I'll press command or control J to duplicate it. Then with that line selected, I'm going to flip it horizontally right up here. And I'll just drag this so that it lines up like that. So the top point should be centered and so should the bottom point. So your shape should look something like this. I'm going to continue this a few more times. So with this line selected, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it with Command or Control J. Then I'm going to grab the node tool and I'm just going to bring it out even more. All right, then with that one selected, I'm going to grab the move tool. I'll duplicate it with Command or Control J. And then I'll flip it horizontally and move it over. So we're just trying to create a sort of mirrored effect. However much we stretch out one line, the other side should also have that same stretching. So that's why I'm duplicating it like this. And let's do this one last time. Command or Control J. I'm going to grab the Node tool. And then I'm going to stretch out this duplicate copy like that. All right, using the Move tool, let's duplicate it, Command or Control J, and then I'll flip it horizontally and I'll move it over. Okay, so your shape should look something like this. At this point, I'm just going to select all of these lines. So I'll select the first one, I'll hold Shift and select the last one. Then I'll press Command or Control G to group them all together. I'm going to make these a child layer to our circle so that they're not going above the circle like this. So I'll click and drag this like that. And now you can see that that's fixed. I think I also want to lower the opacity of these lines just a little bit. So I'll come up here and do that. Okay, we're going to come back and add even more detail to the cactus in a moment. But first, I want to take a little detour, and I want to work on the pot that our cactus will be sitting in. To start, I'm going to grab the rounded rectangle tool, and I'll just click and drag out a rounded rectangle like this. I'm going to round the corners a little bit extra. Then up in the color panel, I'm just going to remove the stroke and I'm going to sample this orange color for the fill. All right, now it sort of looks more like a terracotta pot. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm just going to make the lip a little bit thicker like that, and I'll make sure that this is nice and centered. There we go. Okay, now to give this a little bit more realism, I'm going to curve this lip so it looks like it's a more circular shape. To do that, I'm just going to come up to the context toolbar and I'll click on Convert to Curves. Now I can curve this shape, so I'm going to start in the center right here and I'm just going to drag this downward. 
And I'll do the same for the top, dragging it downward about the same amount. Then I'm going to zoom into my nodes so I can fix these sharp nodes a little bit. You can see we have a bit of an angle here, but if I bring this up until it snaps, now you can see we have a much smoother side right there. So I'm just going to do that for all of the rest of these, bringing them up until they snap. There we go. And now we have a much smoother shape for our lip. Okay, next I want to make the body of the pot, and I'll do that with the rounded rectangle again. I'll just click and drag out a rounded rectangle. I'll make sure this is centered with our shape. And then I don't want you to be able to see where it curves in on the top, so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Then I want this to angle in at the bottom, and to do that, I'm going to convert this shape to curves. Then I'm going to select these two corner points, and I'll just drag them in. And I'll do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to take these two top nodes, and I'm just going to raise them up while holding shift. That way they stay perfectly in line, and now you can't see that weird curving up there. Okay, to finish off the pot, I just want to add a little bit of shading underneath the lip. So I'm going to grab the lip, and then I'm going to duplicate it with Command or Control J. With this duplicate copy, I'm going to make it a darker orange color. So I'll just click and drag it like that. And then I'm going to make this a child layer to the pot. Right now, the order of our layers is a little bit strange. I want the lip to be on top of everything like that. There we go. And now we can take this duplicated lip, and using the move tool, I'm just going to move this downward while holding shift. Like that. So now we just have a little bit of a shadow being cast under the lip, just to add a little bit more division between the two pieces. And I think I actually want to take this same lip and duplicate it again, Command or Control J. And then I'm going to make it a child layer to the cactus, and I'm just going to raise this up with shift. So I want a little bit of a shadow being cast right here, but I want it to be a similar color to the green. So I'm going to sample the exact same green color, and then I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. Then I'll lower the opacity so that you can see the stripes through it. Alright, and there we have it, a little bit of shading just to make this look more real. I really like how the shading looks, but I think I want to add a little bit of a highlight to our main cactus shape. So to do that, I'm just going to close up its group and select it, and then I'm going to duplicate it twice with Command or Control J. With the top layer selected, I'm just going to move it downward while holding Shift and the down arrow, and then I'll move it over once using the left arrow key. So you can see we now have this little sliver right here. That's exactly what I want to use for my highlight. So I'm going to select these two layers that I duplicated, and then I'm going to select the subtract operation, which will remove this top piece from the bottom. So now we're just left with this little piece right here, and I can make it a lighter green color to create that highlight. But this looks a little strange. I think I actually want to sample this light green color right here. There we go, that looks better. So now we have our top highlight, we have our bottom shadow, and now we're ready to move on to adding more detail to our cactus. Because right now, it sort of looks like it's just a watermelon sitting in a pot, so <laughs> let's fix that. I want to start by adding a little flower to the top of our cactus, and I'll do that using the ellipse tool. I'll hold shift to drag out a perfect circle. Then I'm going to place this centered on our cactus. I'm going to sample the pink color. There we go, and then I'm going to drag this underneath our cactus so it's tucked behind it like that. Using the move tool, I'm just going to duplicate this while holding down command or control and moving it over. And I think I'll make this one a little bit smaller, so I'll just shrink it down while holding shift. Once you like the position of that, go ahead and duplicate it one more time by holding Command or Control and Shift. 
I'm not sure if these are lined up perfectly, so I'm just going to select both layers by holding shift and clicking. And then I'm going to make sure that they're centered and it looks like they are, so that's perfect. This little flower is off to a great start. I'm just going to select all of these layers and I'm going to add them together using the add operation. So now they're just one shape. I'll duplicate this shape with command or control J. And then I'll select the bottom shape and I'm just going to make this one bigger while holding shift. I'll make sure it's still centered. And then I'm going to lighten the color. And you can see now this just gives a little bit more depth to our flower. I think I want the whole flower to be smaller though, so I'm going to select both of these layers and I'll just shrink them down. I'll hold shift while I do this, and then I'll make sure they're nice and centered. Okay, I think this looks a little bit more like a cactus, but I want to add a little bit more detail by adding spikes to the outside of the cactus. To do this, I'll use the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag out a little rectangle and I'm going to curve it in all the way. So grab this orange node and bring it all the way in. All right, then I'm just going to position it right here and I'm going to sample the green color. So now we have a little green spike coming out of it. I don't want this to overlap with our stripes though. So I'm going to make sure all of these spikes are placed underneath all of our layers like that. Okay, so my strategy for this is to use the move tool and make sure that these two points are perpendicular to the edge. That way we can just make sure that the angle looks right for each of these spikes. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to duplicate this by holding down command or control on my keyboard and I'll just drag it down. And again, I want these to be perpendicular. The edge is a little more curved down here, so I'm just going to rotate this and I'll bring it in. All right, pretty nice. Let's continue to do that all the way up this side. Command or control to click and drag and then rotate. All right, now would be a good time to check in with your spacing. I think these two are spaced a little bit too much, so I'll just use the arrow key on my keyboard to bring that down. And maybe I'll bring all of the little points down just a little bit. I think that one looks good. Bring that one down again. Okay, once you like your spacing, it's time to duplicate these for the other side. Go over to the layers and hold shift to select all of them and then press Command or Control J to duplicate them. I'm going to drag all of these layers up like this just so that they're all together. These layers should also be up here. Okay, so we should have all of those and all of those grouped together. Yep, okay, perfect. So with all of those selected, I'm just going to flip them horizontally and then I'm going to move them over while holding shift. Okay, so now we should have those spikes and these spikes. I'm just going to select all of the spikes on the right side because I think they should all be this lighter green color. So I'll sample that light green color. And you can see how that just blends in with this highlight a little bit better. In fact, we have a few over here that I think should be highlighted as well. So I'm just going to make sure that that's that same color. So we have light color, light color all along where we placed our highlight. That looks really nice. Okay, we're almost done. I just want to give our cactus a cute little face. And we're only going to use one simple tool to do it, just as a little challenge. <laughs> so the tool I want to use is the crescent tool. So let's go ahead and select that, and I'll click and drag to bring one up. I'm going to select this orange node and I'm going to pull it up like this so that the line is straight. And then while holding shift, I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees like that and I'll place it on the face. I want the fill to be this brown color, so go ahead and sample that and apply it. And then zooming in here, I'm going to duplicate this shape with Command or Control J, and then using the Move tool, I'm going to rotate this shape around while holding Shift, and I'll just bring this up here. 
This will be one of the eyes, so I'll make it a little bit more narrow and then I'll place it like that. And then I'll do this one last time, holding Command or Control and Shift, I'll bring it over like that. To make sure these eyes are centered, I'm going to select both of them and then center them up like that, and I'll make sure the mouth is also centered. Okay, I want to give the mouth a little bit of a tongue shape. I'm going to do that by duplicating one of these. I'll press Command or Control J, and I'll bring this in like that. Then I'm going to make this a child layer to the mouth, and I'll make it the same pink color of our flower. You can position this however you'd like. I think that looks pretty cute. To finish off the face, I just want to round these corners a little bit. So I'm going to select all of these shapes by holding shift and clicking on them in the layers. And then I'm going to select the corner tool. Then I'm going to select all of these corners that you see here, and I'm going to round them all inward. Don't do this too much. <laughs> Just a little bit to soften the edges. And now you can see what we have there. At this point, feel free to adjust the positioning of the face with the Move tool. I think I'll bring mine up just a little bit. And now you can see what that looks like. Alright, great work everyone! This cactus character is so adorable. If you liked this project, there's more where that came from. You can check out my Affinity Designer course in the video description where we learn about a lot of great tools and skills in Designer, and then practice everything we learn by doing a bunch of fun projects together just like this one. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.